okay, what we're going to do for you now is we're going to go back and we're going to take each item and we're going to discuss it with you. So remember, we've, di we've discussed broad concepts. We're now going to direct concepts and Erica and I are now going to discuss each concept with you so that you are fully conversant with the new items that we have been dealing with thus far. Okay, let's start with the direct raw material stock that we've used. Now, if you remember, we refer you back to every time to the example that we started with, the resources that was used and the final product. So going back to the direct raw material stock. First of all, it's very important that if you look at the description, what kind of an account, how can we classify this? This is an asset account and it's generally kept according to the perpetual stock method. Also, if we can refer you back to our previous lesson, we dealt with periodic and perpetual inventory systems. So basically, what does it mean? Every time that I buy a stock, we spoke about trading stock, or if it was the periodic inventory, we spoke about purchases. Now, if we go to the examples in our, in our particular case, the lever, the planks, and the flower, those are things that's directly involved in the manufacturing of this particular product. So if we take it to our example, in the one where we made the paper chains, what would be our example would be the paper, would be our direct raw materials or our direct stock account. We move on to the next account, which is called your work in process stock account. Okay, this account shows the cost of the raw material, the labor and the factory overheads already paid. Okay, now taking it back to your example, it will be the leather used plus our salaries paid to our shoemaker plus the rent that was paid to our landlord in order to manufacture the shoes or the cakes or whatever product we are manufacturing. So once again, the work in process stock account is an account that brings together all those three components. And in our later lessons, we will actually show you these accounts. At the moment, we're dealing with terminology and we want you to, ex to understand what we're dealing with so that when we move on to the ledger accounts, it becomes abundantly clear to you what we have been discussing. We now look at the finished goods. Like the account says, the finished goods stock. This account indicates the production cost of the finished goods that's manufactured during this particular period. So looking at what is the final product. So if we take the leather, we put it together, we glue it, we put everything together. What is our final product? It's the shoe, it's the cake, or it's the furniture. Okay. Moving on to our next item, and that is our consumable indirect materials or consumable stores. Remember, when we manufactured our paper chain, we spoke about the print, we spoke about the sellotape, we spoke about the cleaning materials, now all of that. The cost of raw materials not directly related to the manufacturing of a particular product, the lubricants, the cleaning materials, the glue, etc. So what we want you to do is, as we are discussing this terminology, make a mental note of it. If you have to, write them down so that when we get into the meat of this particular work, then you understand what we are doing. Also, it's very important to remember that it's very, it's very difficult to actually understand the ledger accounts if you don't understand the concepts of this particular section. So therefore, it's important that we first emphasize and explain to you very clearly all these new concepts. Now, having a look at the next one, the direct raw material cost. This is the cost of the raw material used in the particular manufacturing of that final product. So like, again, if we go back to our example, that would be the leather, the plonk, um, the flour that was used to bake that particular cake. Okay, now remember, this one is specific where it says direct raw materials cost. That means the actual amount used, okay? So remember that it's a cost account which tells you the actual amount used. Moving on to direct labor. The cost of the employees directly involved in the manufacturing of products. Again here, the factory workers who have made the product, the machinist who works in the machine to make the garment, the shoemaker who, who puts the leather together, who uses the glue, that is the person. Remember, direct labor, the person directly involved. And here again, I'm going to ask you a question, and Erica is going to answer this one for me. The, the, the cost 
of the person who was cleaning the factory would that be passed part of my direct labor erica no definitely not that 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 takes us to the next one the indirect labor cost now remember what ashraf said not directly involved in the manufacturing of that particular product but we still need that person who cleans or who's who's making sure that everything else takes place but not directly involved in the manufacturing so if we have a look then at the definition of the indirect labor that is the cost of the employee not directly involved in the manufacturing of the product so that would be the person that oversees everything the supervisor the cleaners the security because we definitely do need them to make sure that we arrive to that final product all right and then we move on to our factory overhead cost now remember other than what we've mentioned already you're going to have to take other costs into account for example those costs which are associated with the manufacturing process but cannot be directly identified for example if you've paid insurance you can't attribute that to one particular product therefore it needs to be divided amongst all your products and this is what we call our factory overheads that means other costs that were incurred by us during the financial year and which needs to be spread over all the products that were manufactured and here again examples would be electricity insurance depreciation etc the list is endless you are off with these accounts and you will see the link in other lessons when we come back and we talk about factory overhead costs <laughs>